This week we start one of the important models that we will be looking at in this unit and this is the binary logistic regression model. So we'll take a look at how this works in R as well as some of the details. Some of the parts of the lecture notes are a little bit mathematical but in the end you don't have to worry too much about it. It's the techniques that are important. If you understand the maths it's better but if you don't we can do without it. The example we've seen in the last few lectures is this of the Donna Party tragedy, where in 1846 the Donna Party becomes stranded while attempting to cross the Sierra Nevada mountains, and by the time they were rescued on, in April 1947, I reckon this should be 1847 actually, I'll check the dates for that one, but uh, many of the members had died, and so anthropologists have been studying this to take a look at the survival attributes of the differing genders and age under the harsh, con harsh conditions. And you'll find this paper in this particular journal where you can look it up if you wish. So the idea here is to work out whether females are better equipped to deal with stress under these conditions and survive than males are. Here's the record of the data. So it's in the sleuth book package, so it's Sleuth 3, and the case to study is Case 2001. So what we're doing over here is the two commands that you've seen before. It's with a data frame. All that does is it makes some calculations using the variables stored underneath the particular data frame. Within that we have over here, it actually modifies the data frame. So we've got within Donna, serve is a new variable we're creating which is as numeric status and sex is also a new variable which is 2 minus as numeric sex you can have a look to see what that this does here below there if you look at the data so at the moment we had sex was male or female and status was, status was died or survived so if we take a look at the status as numeric instead of converting this to 1 0 it converts this to 1 2 so it would have converted died to 1 and survived to 2 in the usual alphabetical order. Subtracting 1 from that over here makes that a 0, 1 variable. Likewise, 6 male and female, it would make female 1 and male 2. So subtracting this from, from 2 would convert the male to 0 and the female to 1 and that's what's happened here. So have a look at how this works. So I've got here 6 is 0, 1, 0 indicating male and survival here is 0, 1, 0 indicating died and 1 indicating survived and here is the summary of the data. You can see the 15 males and 30 females 15 females and 30 males out of the total number, 25 died and 20 survived. Here's a plot of the data of survival with respect to age with the gender superimposed here as the color code and the symbol. So the square indicates male and the red circle indicates female. You mightn't see much from this graph, but if I go to the next graph, you'll find same graph with a little bit of difference. We've got this extra thing called jitter, which we didn't have in the last graph. If you look at that. What this does is, in the first graph, there are several points that were on top of each other, and you would only see one point. Here we have actually jittered them, meaning we've shifted them around a little bit, moved them around. So you'll find there's two points over here, and likewise, there are actually two points over here, and maybe two points over there with the male on top as well. And so we move them around a little bit so you can see more clearly the number of points here. By looking at that, you might find, as you take a look at age, it looks like at the lower ages, females tend to survive more. At the higher ages, maybe it's about equal, not quite sure, not quite clear. But certainly, the survival of females does come down as age increases. 
So the models for the data here would be if I represents the ith interval and the status of survival is indicated by an variable yi here. So yi is 1 with probability 5, which means the person has survived, and 0 with probability 1 minus 5, which means the person has passed away or died. So yi is Bernoulli, and the probability mass function is essentially probability survival is pi, so it's pi to the yi, and 1 minus pi to the 1 minus yi. So when yi is 0, that means the person has died, you can see that disappears, and I'm just put 1 minus pi, this is equal to 1, when yi is 0. On the other hand, if yi is 1, so this is now 0, so this becomes 1, and I get pi, and that's all I get from there, so you can see it does give the quarter probabilities as I expect it to. In the next slide, what we know already, that the mean for yi is pi, and the variance is pi times 1 take pi. So, so far, what we've done is, as far as analysis is concerned, is looked at this as, and this as a two-way table, and we've taken a look at single proportions for hypothesis tests, or we've taken a look at difference of proportions, or we've looked at something like a higher squared test, or some, some, something similar, or compared to odds ratios, but based on a two-way table. The problem with that is we can only include two variables in there, two categorical variables in there. And so we can't use any of the covariates to include in there. So what we were going to, going to do now is use some regression model for this kind of data, so we can include covariates in the models as well. So in the simple case, in the case of linear regression where we would normal base data, so where the responses are normal, with the assumption is mean mu i and sigma squared is the variance, fixed variance for simple linear regression where we have only one x variable, then the mean essentially is given by a straight down equation. Given the value of xi, xi, the mean is a simple equation in terms of xi, so beta naught plus beta 1 xi here, and the mean here can be positive or negative, depending on the values of y. Of course, that's not the case with Bernoulli regression. The first thing is with Bernoulli regression is the probabilities here need to lie between 0 and 1. And here, uh, that is not what I need. I need less than equal to 1. So here, in the regression case, when I'm looking at the mean value of yi, now I know the mean value of yi is just pi, it's a probability that needs to lie between 0 and 1. Now, that's not the case. If I use linear regression, we are based on normal data because there the values of the expected values can be negative or positive. Now, for the ith individual, the probability won't be the same for every individual. It depends on the individual, of course, and also depends on the covariance. So here, for the ith individual, the probability or the mean is pi i. Probability of survival essentially is pi i. And that must lie between 0 and 1. And there's a linear regression here doesn't guarantee us that. So I do want to include the other variables and covariance in this case age in the model. But and the idea is we do like linear models because they're nice and additive models and they're simple to interpret. But the problem is that if I use the usual ideas of normal regression, I get the expected values could be above one or below zero. So what we'll do instead is, instead of actually modeling the probability, we'll model the odds ratio. Because we know the odds ratio certainly is not confined between 0 and 1. At worst, it's confined above 0, bigger than equal to 0. And so in this case, what we'll do is, we'll take a look at the logit or the log of the odds ratio. And that's defined as the log of pi i over 1 take pi i. We know that as pi goes towards 1, the bottom line goes towards 0. So this particular thing in the bracket becomes very large, and so the log also goes to infinity. And as pi i goes towards 0, in this case, I have 0 on the top, and the bottom line is 1, and log of 0, as, x goes to, as, as the bracket goes towards 0, the log goes towards negative infinity. So here, I have the logit actually lies between negative infinity and infinity. So I could describe that with some kind of regression model. 
here's a plot of that logit here the log of the odds ratio you can see it certainly behaves itself quite well and I can actually now do a regression so I've got log here of pi i over 1 take pi i is beta naught plus beta 1 xi if I just solve for pi i from there it, is, it doesn't take a lot of work, you can do the algebra yourself if you have difficulty ask me in the lectures or ask tutors it's nice and simple, all I'm doing is reversing that if I simply replace this by say a symbol like a then from there I'll be able to get if I take the exponential of both sides I get pi i over 1 take pi i is equal to exponential of a if I take this one take pi i to the right hand side I get pi i is 1 minus pi i times e to the a if I expand the right hand side I get e to the a minus pi i e to the a and if I then take the term containing pi i to the left hand side I get pi i plus pi i e to the a is equal to e to the a and when I then factorize from here pi i I get 1 plus e to the a equals e to the a so you can see my pi i is going to be e to the a divided by 1 plus e to the a that's what I've got here pi i is e a with exponential of a and a is all of this of 1 plus exponential of a all of that so you can see it solves nicely so the thing is my pi i in the end still is a probability it lies between 0 and 1 because exponential is always positive and the bottom line with an extra added 1 makes it bigger than the top line so the whole thing is less than 1 or less than equal to 1 that works out quite nicely <clears throat> what we do is we write here pi i is exponential of neta i 1 plus exponential i where if I divide by the exponential of neta i top and bottom on the bottom this cancels off with that and if I divide this by exponential then I know that 1 over e of x is the same as e to the negative x so when I divide out by this term over here I get 1 over that which is the exponential of negative of the coefficient and that divided by that gives me just 1 there now so this neta i here is my linear predictor of the model and so this is how we think of this mathematically so gi is log of pi i over 1 take pi i and that's some function here of the covariates and we call g the link function in this case my g is the log of the odds ratio so this is the logit link and here is just a plot of uh, what we're looking at here as far as probability goes probability in other words I'm transforming the logit back to probabilities so here for the various values of the exponential what I've got is exponential of this over one place exponential of, as I had over here it's one per, over x of negative meter i it's a nice smooth curve that looks like that so again just revising the binary logistic regression model is where the response y is binary with probability of 1 being y, pi, pi i and probability of 0 being 1 take pi i and the probability mass function is that I have over there pi i can be found by taking a look at the regression equation turned around model parameters here depending on how many variables are fitting would be beta naught, beta 1 and so on and so forth exactly the same as in the normal regression these can be estimated by maximum likelihood which is a very neat nice simple way of doing it mathematically and they do have the maximum likelihood estimates have some very nice properties which we will see later on here so I'll stop there and when we come back we'll fit the model for the donor party